Hey everyone, I just wanted to make a quick video because I'm in a gigantic reading slum and you know, nothing has kept me you know, interested in content or a story more than sitcoms right now and I've been binge watching a bunch of sitcoms more recently is Two Broke Girls and now I'm watching a Big Bang Theory and I'm on the fifth season going on to the sixth. And I thought, you know, if I just had a fantasy book that is similar to a sitcom, I'll be so happy right now. And I thought, hey, I actually have read a few fantasy books that are actually sort of sitcom like. So I just wanted to share with you guys five fantasy books that I feel are suitable for sitcom lovers. And all of them are going to be standalones, so no worries about them there. There's no series for you to continue. And I just want to talk about like what I define as a sitcom. And with the kind of sitcoms I like to watch, there are always this like, crazy cast of characters that don't seem to come together, but they do. And they all fit in the story perfectly, um, but they're all so significantly different from each other. Um, it's generally going to be funny, lighthearted. Um, it's not going to take itself too seriously, but there are moments in time where the characters will question, you know, difficult things that, that are happening in their life and that, you know, their general cozy life isn't always going to be as how they planned it to be. And that's literally how I define, like, finding the fantasy books that will fit, you know, a sitcom lover. So the very first book that I read recently that would actually fit this is um, Starter Villain by John Scalzi. It's about a guy who is really down on his luck. There's not much going on for him. He is so upset uh, with life because, you know, his wife just left him. He, he doesn't have a job. He's just a substitute teacher. And he's really, really down on his luck. And one day, he realizes that, you know what? Oh my god, my uncle just died and he has inherited his uncle's entire fortune and it turns out that his uncle is actually a super villain and he has to learn how to be a super villain like his uncle and so we're introduced to a wide range of characters who are really hilarious and all don't seem to come together at the right places John Scalzi is incredibly funny and you know it's very slice of life for you with the story because there's no like main plot line we know that he's just trying to learn to be a super villain and it's not so much about him um, it's more about him going through his life and trying to figure out what best and how best to move forward with it. And John Scalzi just writes in such a funny manner. Like, he is incredibly hilarious, which is why the second book that I'm recommending is also a book by John Scalzi. And I promise it will be the last one, uh, which is Kaiju Preservation Society, which is another John Scalzi book that I read last year. And essentially, it's just a spin and a take on Jurassic Park, but instead with kaijus, which are like Japanese um, uh, monsters of some sort. So they're mythical, they look like they're as big as um, dinosaurs, but they're not. And they're all different in their own ways. And because, again, this character is also down on his luck, and he was given an amazing opportunity to work with this kaiju preservation society, but nobody knows that this society even exists. And he meets a bunch of different scientists and interesting people. And again, no main plot line to this book. It's just fun times in a world that is like Jurassic Park. And our character just learning to live and learning to be happy. Yeah. And the next book that I would like to recommend is... Um, surprisingly, I don't know if it's surprisingly for any of you. But it will be Nettle and Bone by T. King Fisher. And the reason why is actually because I find that Nettle and Bone is kind of cozy as a fantasy. There is a main point in the plot, but there's something so humorous about the way Tinky and Richard writes for Nettle and Bone. And the characters come together in a... They're a really lettic group of characters that are very strange and doesn't seem to fit together, but they all have their little quirky personalities that just brings so much to the story. And because... The story is essentially about our main character who is trying to save her sister from this really abusive 
a marriage to a prince from another country. And the reason why her sister is married to this guy is because, um, you know, they want to form their kingdom together and they, they need a union between their kingdoms so they will have peace. But she knows her sister was in this abusive relationship with the prince and she wants to save her. And it's just, she collects a bunch of people who come to help her and it's just really funny in its own little lighthearted way. And it's serious, but you can tell there's this, this light undertone as if it's a pastel fairy tale taking place in a really grim world and setting. And of course, like you said, uh, like I said, abuse is not an easy subject, but something about this group of characters just make it so easy to push through the story. And it's a really short story. And you, you come to love every single one of them and what they bring to the group dynamic. And it's just how I feel about, you know, the kind of sitcoms that I watch where a unlikely group of people come together like Friends, Big Bang Theory, and they all bring a little something different to the table. And you would love them for who they are in every single different way that they are. Yeah. The next book that I want to talk about is Never Die by Rob J. Hayes. And... <laughs> This is a self-published fantasy, which is great, and is technically a standalone in this um, series of books that he has, where each book is just more of a companion novel to each other. So this is more of a, also a uh, singular novel. And we are following a cast of unlikely characters once again. And um, we're following a main character who is this little boy, and he seems to be collecting heroes to help him with his task. It, which is to take down this ruthless leader. And um, so he's collecting all these characters, all these legendary heroes who are known for their fighting prowess. And it's just something so funny about the way Rob J. Hayes writes. There's also something so heartening about the stories of our characters. They all have their difficult backstories, but they all come together, they joke, they laugh, and they don't get along. And I think that's what's so beautiful about reading the story. There is also still a plot. There is something to move forward with. But ultimately, the collection of heroes is the biggest part of the story and you see them come together and grow together and I thought was really heartening as a story and really funny but also um, entertaining because uh, Rob J. Hayes writes uh, action sequences really well and because this um, world is, takes place in a supposedly like Asian setting, like a Japanese style setting, all our characters know some sort of ushu or um, martial arts and so the way he describes those things are really really um, fun and stuff. Yeah. And the final book that I'd like to recommend you is The Princess Bride by William Goldman. So <laughs> I know that this is a movie, and theoretically this is not a sitcom, but once again, it is a journey about princesses and princes, and essentially what happens is Buttercup is our main character, and she gets, she gets captured, and she's a, she's a princess-to-be, and she's captured by these, like, this Latin group of assassins, and someone, or supposedly the, the Jack Pirate Roberts, is coming to save her, and there's just this very unlikely chemistry between all these characters and it's so fun and exciting and really just cozy and slice of lifey because I mean not so much of the slice of life but they all have their own little quirkiness and backstories and they're really adorable and just a really unlikely group of people coming together to achieve their goals and I mean, there is the movie that's out and it's something that I like to watch when I feel like really down and uh, down under and it's just really funny and cozy and a happy good time, which also is what a sitcom reminds me of. Yeah, so this is just a quick little video and um, I hope this makes sense and that as a sitcom lover, you also agree with my choices. If you're going to pick any of the books up, let me know. But otherwise, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to this channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.